meeting uh, accepted the bids of Republic uh, Services for garbage uh, collection for a five-year period of time on various sizes of poly carts and dumpster units um, and the terms and conditions under which that would be uh, picked up and disposed, in, including uh, recycling. <clears throat> this, the city uh, in the past uh, has applied a percentage uh, over that as a user charge rather than administering it as a property tax uh, on other similar uh, garbage kinds of services that we do, uh, including leaf pickup and remediation of, uh, of some kinds of, of health issues which fall into that same kind of sanitation category. <clears throat> In the past, that has been a 21% uh, a calculation on the total dollars that are received from uh, Republic Services. On the back page of your position paper, <clears throat> there is a, a, a recitation that John Locke put together um, that shows that the total sanitation administrative costs, including the leaf pickup, operational supplies, equipment rental, supplies, billing, and postage. Um, come to about $214,000. The 21%, we're recommending an increase of 1% on the surcharge, will bring us to a, an income, all things being equal, of about uh, $195,299. So we'll still be just a, a bit short uh, of, of trying to do a total collection uh, which is, is satisfactory. This is a year in which the contractor, next year is the year in which the contractor said he would not raise rates, and so for us to go up just a little bit will help try to equalize our leaf pickup and other uh, garbage ser refuse service costs. So we recommend uh, the commission set rates at the bid price, first of all, that Republic bid, and then adding that 21% uh, surcharge so that we collect uh, on the garbage bill the kinds of garbage pickup uh, that the city EPS services does. Well, even with the 1% bump, this would still project a shortfall in this sanitation fund. But only because they're projecting they're going to transfer $146,000. That does not mean that they have to transfer $146,000. That's part of this whole puzzle and part of me having conversations with them over this issue. And I'm not saying it hasn't taken place, but is it another piece of the puzzle that we look at administrative costs and uh, see if there are ways to bring those down as well as, for example, uh, you know, contractors having a willingness to do so. So are those reviewed periodically or at some point? So if there are ways we can find to bring administrative costs down, we, we look at that as much as we do request to increase the cost. Yes, and within the last, I mean, Commissioner James will remember that we, we cut a staff person a number of years ago out of the administration. Um, there's certainly other places that we can look in the operational costs. Uh, that Tim does on a routine basis of how we photocopy things and buy paper and all that kind of thing. So we will continue to do that. The, uh, the idea that a policy doesn't have uh, the force of something uh, as a remedy uh, to enforce it if it's violated, I think there's something to be said for that. And if we're, what we're looking to do is uh, improve on appearance and quality of life, I, I think more than a policy may be required. Uh, the question becomes, how do we get there? And if a, an ordinance or a code amendment would allow for a proper vetting by the public uh, and, and, and then decision making by the commission, you know, long term that may be the better solution than the policy approach. I can see with polycarts coming online more and more and the incentive to use those uh, a reason to have some type of uh, 
criteria in mind, and I think this is a reflection of that, but it, 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 it seems to me it, it won't accomplish what uh, I would perceive as a goal to improve the appearance of things that are unsightly to begin with, especially in residential areas, uh, and, and take into account the different uses that are permitted in different residential zones of the city. Um, I didn't hear an answer to the question uh, Mr. Jones posed about dumpster complaints, the number of uh, complaints there are or the response to that. Is there some statistic we have or record we could look at to see other numbers of things like that? Well, I think Commissioner Hoganson kind of hit that you know, right on the head. Uh, people come, become complacent. There's times in the spring where we go down and I mean, there is trash in every single dumpster. We have to notify 10 different dumpster owners, and we never receive a call about it. So, no, there isn't a lot of data to back up complaints. I think it's a general condition, as Commissioner Hogan's pointed out. Uh, this would not prohibit the use of dumpsters in residential spaces. Uh, as I see it, it would prohibit those to be shared if you're not adjoining. Um, reference to new dumpsters, uh, those that exist are sometimes more problematic uh, uh, than the new. So, uh, you know, I see it as a step in the right direction, and there is some guidance that, uh, you know, staff and uh, others are looking for, but uh, this may be more of a short term approach to a long. Uh, term issue that to me would be better addressed through an ordinance amendment or a code amendment. Uh, we've done that before in the city, uh, not so much with uh, refuse, but with zoning. And uh, within recent memory, the uh, classification of the RP zone, uh, and that survived the ballot challenge. So uh, the majority of the citizens weighed in on that and felt it was uh, good policy and practice to create the RP zones within the city and uh, not suggesting that as a future for a refuse policy or ordinance, but uh, it could lend itself to that too, perhaps. So um, the question I, I'm left with is, uh, and, and again, it seems to take an inordinate amount of time uh, and attention to look at uh, picking up garbage, but uh, what is the direction to be taken? If this policy is not adopted, and I don't have my uh, Bible in front of me, but it seems to me for proposed ordinance or uh, code changes that goes to the Planning Commission. Only if it's in, within the zoning ordinance. If it's a police power ordinance outside the zoning ordinance, it comes right to the Commission. And the Commission has sometimes uh, exercise discretion and ask the Planning Commission to look at something of an ordinance change which isn't specifically within the zoning ordinance but is so closely related to the zoning ordinance that Planning Commission input is requested. Um, well, and, and again, it's not to kick the can down the road, but to me the Planning Commission is uh, suited to look at this, especially if the focus is on uh, use in residential zones. They're called upon frequently to uh, conduct public hearings and make recommendations to the commission. And uh, again, I think to get a handle on this to move it forward, it does need, uh, to me, to rise to the level of something more of a, a code or ordinance uh, creation versus a policy. And even though a policy can be revisited and uh, you see how it stands up to the test of time, um, that to me is deferring action when I think action is needed in terms of long term. So, um, depending on what the vote is on this, thought given to uh, directing the Planning Commission to look at uh, ordinance change or code change, whatever it takes to uh, deal with this issue on a more long term basis. And if the focus is on residential, then I think they're suited for that. 
I think you can accomplish what you're looking at with this just by, here's what the guidelines are within the city. I like if that. you uh, promulgate that, I, I agree with you. Most of the public will try to follow guidelines. Once they're out there, they know what they are. I think most people try to follow the rules. And uh, uh, neighborhood services can provide further guidance. And if there's a permit process already in place, then uh, they can be steered towards that. And, and again, this can be routed uh, onto the Planning Commission and eventually before a City Commission for, um, uh, again, I think that something that lends itself to an ordinance. And uh, if uh, people are displeased with that, they can call for a vote on it, uh, ballot or some referendum. Uh, but I think it needs to move in that direction to lend finality to it. Otherwise, we'll be revisiting policy after policy, and pretty soon, uh, what is the policy? Well, it's undergone so many changes, no one knows what it is anymore. Uh, these are guidelines, and uh, those guidelines can be followed uh, until something more concrete and permanent can be arrived at. And I think we can get there. Uh, you're right, uh, not everybody will agree. Uh, a lot of things in life that way, it doesn't keep us from making decisions, though. If we avoid making a decision because not everybody agrees, we'll never make one. I think we need to look closely at getting the Planning Commission to start looking at uh, an ordinance, some code, whatever the, the terminology is to make this on the books, enforceable, and uh, consequences if uh, it's not followed. So maybe I can discuss that in more detail with Mr. Sobers and Mr. Schweppenheiser.